With a gasp of dismay, she ran to him, her amethyst eyes wide with alarm. You fool, she hissed. Suppose someone saw you. The Duke's men are everywhere. You fool, she whispered again. You sweet, brave, wonderful fool. I should have died had you not found my bedchamber. Then she was in his arms and all her qualms forgotten as she tore his tunic asunder and thrust her eager lips against the sinews of his naked chest. As his brazen fingers peeled the silken fabric from her heaving bosom, he held her quivering alabaster mounds. At that moment, she felt the proof of his rampant passion against her milky thighs. His almost godlike beauty was marred only by the fact that he was cross-eyed, three feet tall, and had breath like owl droppings. Good afternoon, Seattle. Welcome back to Le Frères Heureux, a Fraser podcast. We are back with disc three of season four. Yes. Yep. That was that was that sort correct. of a semi question. Yes. Um, we are your hosts, as always. I'm Fraser, and I am Deirdre Savage. That that's apparently. Uh, hello, Deirdre. How how are you today? <laughs> Any new novels in the works? No, no. The after the long-awaited sequel to The Rose and the Rapier didn't do all that well. Oh, that's that's disappointing. That's, that's a shame to hear. But it's lovely to have you on the show. Yeah, it's lovely to have you here. Hilarious <laughs> jokes aside, I am you, and I am the other host of this podcast. We should have just kept that going. We could have done. Could have been Deirdre Savage for the rest of the episode. What do I look like? An Auntie Donna? Is that what I look like? Someone who keeps up character comedy in podcasts? Do you really want me to answer that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've got a, a wonderful disc ahead of us. Arguably one of the best, or certainly contains one of the some of the best episodes. Yeah. Going by my ratings, it could be tied with our previous best disc. Interesting. So interesting. See, or, or possibly even overtaking it, depending on what you've given it. Yeah, it was a little bit of a mixed bag mm-hmm. for me, I'm afraid to say. There was a couple of episodes that didn't quite live up yeah to to the memory that i had of them yeah i don't think they're all absolute crackers no 100 percent, but definitely a lot of strength in this disc yeah i know what she said cracker polly polly want a cracker oh yeah oh, so there you go thinking about the birds didn't, didn't even intend it no of course not you're not that funny no i'm not <laughs> I'm I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> You're the your humor keeps this podcast going. <laughs> I just ramble on. Yeah. Say good a lot. <laughs> I think we both say good a lot. I've realized that a lot of the time I just go, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's good. Yep. It's, it's, <laughs> well, you're talking. I just kind of go, uh-huh. yeah. yeah. It's fine. It's fine. We both get our moments. Yeah. Shall we start? Shall we get stuck in? We shall. With this disc? We shall. We shall. Let's do it. Four for the seesaw. One of the the few episodes that doesn't really have a funny title. I don't know if it's a play on anything. It doesn't feel like it's a play on anything. There's a a book or a play or a film or something that's called Two for the Seesaw. Oh, okay. And this is supposed to be a, a riff on that, but I don't think it's anything. Oh well, there you go. That well known. I I mean, I'd never heard of it. No. Not that that really says it's well known. No, or not well known. But anyway. No. Fraser and Niles have met two lovely ladies, Laura and Beth, on an outing to Cafe Nervosa. There, there was a lack of tables, and they they joined these these two. Uh, what are they? Interior designers. Kitch- yeah, they design kitchens. Design yeah. kitchens. Interior yeah, designers. Pretty unique, and they say it's a really boring job. But I think I'd find that interesting, even for like sort of normal people. It's still a pretty cool job. It's I'd pretty... find it very interesting if I met yeah. someone who designed kitchens for a living. I'd be into that because like, yeah. I I love a I love a nice kitchen. Yeah, but Fraser and Niles are obviously very taken by it. They, they love are. their They've... their fashion and interior design and all that jazz. So they they hit it off quite well, and it kind of just snowballs immediately. They they go out for dinner together, go on a double date, 
and then Martin conveniently has um lo- not he's not lost his cabin. What is it? Sherry's not feeling well, or she's going away on she's yeah going to visit they, family. They, I think they can't, it is. they can't go for some reason. Yeah, so so Martin's got this cabin paid for, another another cabin in the woods. Last yeah. week they were going, they were planning to go to the cabin in Boston. They did, or maybe it wasn't even in Boston. Cabin somewhere, and ended up going to Boston instead. Yeah, for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. They were going to go and rough it in the lots of the great cabin cancellations wilderness. in this series. <laughs> there are, and that keeps going. I think there's a, there are there's at least a few there actually. are several times that they plan to go to cabins and yeah. then it falls through for whatever and reason and they have to you know weird a running theme yeah. So they end up going off to this little cabin, this cozy little cabin out in the wilderness for a romantic getaway. Only it, it uh, in true Fraser fashion, it goes a little bit tits up. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I've said that exact phrase before, and I had to resist from typing that phrase about three times over the course of this disc. <laughs> it always goes tits up because that is just how how the show starts to go is sort of these very straight played situations totally turned on they their just, head yeah. because of Frasier and Niles I suppose to an extent mm-hmm. and others even There's, everyone always makes an ass of themselves in this show or in, in sitcoms generally yeah that's true that's what makes it a situational comedy yeah, yeah there you go so Frasier and Niles I suppose come across really well at the start of this episode they do they come across very confident very charming very charming very flirty they get along well with laura and beth uh i don't know who megan mullally megan mullally plays beth plays beth and lisa dar lisa dar plays laura laura um i don't know lisa dar from anything else i don't think no not as well known well. of an actress as megan mullally is you know, from will and grace, will and grace primarily largely parks and rec yeah lots of voice acting mm-hmm. recently she's done a lot of voice yeah. voices recently the wonderful um, actress oh she's has, amazing. i think it was partly because will and grace she became oh. known for having quite a unique voice yeah because she's like not necessarily like high-pitched but quite squeaky yeah and um yeah she's wonderful she's her style of comedy as well is just it's brilliant always fantastic yeah we don't see that much of it here no no she's quite quite restrained and quite yeah normal. yeah restrained yeah but yeah they're both they're both very attractive they're both oh, very yeah, intelligent they're both very a- attractive in the non-physical sense as well just their mm. presence yeah they show very, themselves very, very appealing very cultured and they, they talk about yeah. going to the symphony and going out to they go to the uh, a play with yeah. Fraser and niles they talk about going to uh, yeah art galleries mm-hmm. together so clearly they have a lot in common and... yeah and of course that all gets thrown away uh it on it you know what it's actually niles is kind of you can almost let him off He's i be- think what niles is doing is a lot more justified i think there's a little a, bit yeah so the issue that niles has is when he's presented with the possibility of sleeping with a woman mm-hmm while he's still separated from Maris, Mm -hmm. he's very conflicted because they never went over the ground rules of what they were and were not allowed to do. So I know that that's a very delicate situation and I don't blame him for being uncomfortable and wanting to be cautious, especially if in his head there is still a chance of he and Maris reconciling. But if you've been separated for a year, I think it's implied that you could probably do what you want physically with someone else. I, I personally, I would argue that if you are separated and you agree you're separated from that moment, you're not together. Any, anything goes. Regardless of if you're still married, mm-hmm. you're separated. And if you both agree on that, yeah, you're effectively single. Um, regardless of the the law behind yeah. it, I guess um, tying them together. But yeah, Niles has a bit of a freak out. He starts to panic because, well, he phones Maris and she's okay with it. Yeah. And then he kind of panics because she is okay with it. So he starts to wonder, oh, well, is she off seeing other people as well? And he kind of just get he, he works himself up unnecessarily. You know, he's got a wonderful woman in front of him who's who who gets along great. You know, there's a few times in the episode that Beth is v- really quite 
visibly taken by Niles. Oh yeah, which definitely. Which doesn't She's happen very often. Into him. Um, Niles is always kind of the... He's a bit dorky when yeah, it comes to talking definitely. with women um but here she's you know she finds him very funny mm-hmm. charming and he, he just oh, he just throws it all away he does fraser on the other hand absolutely deserves everything he's got coming to oh, him yeah he's actively horrible in this episode mm-hmm. i really hate watching this scene the the, the end scene in the cabin mm-hmm. because not only is he it goes beyond like inconsiderate and selfish. It goes like actively like sexist. Oh yeah, and misogynistic. Yeah, and properly objectifying them. He even says, "Don't even think of them as people. Think of them as bodies that we can have sex with." Yeah, which is horrible. And he's complaining the whole time about like I haven't had sex in months. I know. And it's like, who do you think's responsible for that, Fraser? <laughs> the call is coming from inside the house. I know. I'm sorry. Like this. <laughs> This is your fault. It's on you. It's it, it's wild as well because they get they get on so well. Like honestly, like the two of them, D- 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 Laura and Beth, despite only being in it for a few scenes, they don't have a huge presence in the episode. Um, I would say it, mo- it focuses more on Fraser and Niles and their reactions to having new girlfriends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Than the the guests themselves. They're not really in on the situation. They're kind of just. They are the situation. They are the situation. I guess, yeah. yeah, but they they make an impact. I think they get along really well. Like acting wise, I think they bounce off the cast really well. Like I would mm-hmm. love to see more of them if that mm-hmm. was sort of a short arc. Yeah, over a few episodes, the two of them, even a two parter or something, mm-hmm. I would love to see more of them. And they get on so well, and he just throws it away. It's just so ah oh, infuriating <laughs> yeah. to watch. Yeah. Frasier is the um, antagonist of Frasier. It, like, it's, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Um, but it's... Yeah. It it ends after that. That That is the end of the episode. That's, yeah. Frasier makes his awful, awful speech out loud. Loud enough for the, the, the two ladies to hear him. And they are quite understandably angry. Disgusted. Disgusted whatever else words we could use to yeah. describe Fraser in that moment um and they they storm off to bed and he, arguably niles probably could have saved the situation with him and beth maybe if he really wanted to yeah Fraser, nah there's no way back oh, for him oh god he's no. done no, no, no. he's done um and yeah that 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 ends that little affair with the two lovely ladies from cafe nervosa yeah Ah, well, it's a real shame. I just feel like I want to give out a huge big sigh whenever I want to, I whenever know. I watch it's, this episode. This is, this is one of the big ones that is, I, I, it, not necessarily I will avoid watching it or that I feel unhappy watching it. And I still think it's a good episode. I gave it a strong rating mm-hmm. because I think it's really, really consistently good right up until the end. Yeah. I'll get to the rating in a minute, but. I think it's one of the episodes that if I'm going back and watching the series, I'll probably skip over it mm. just because of how uncomfortable the end makes me. Yeah, how much that's I, fair. How much I hate it. That's fair. Um, I do. It does start a trend as well of inconsistency with Fraser and sometimes Niles, but less so of, and even in this disc, of him being both attractive yeah. to ladies and unattractive and and disgusting yes <laughs> to them the 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 antithesis of the females <laughs> like, yeah there's a, there's a lot where it's like on the surface lots of people are consistently attracted to him yeah but then as soon as they get to know him he has in some way ruined it i would say even even when they first meet him there are situations on both sides of it there are situations where he is very charming, very flirtatious, right from the get-go. And then the next episode, sometimes in the same episode, he's just unbearable and pretentious and yeah. can't get his head together. And it's a weird inconsistency when it comes to his dating life. Something that just continues throughout the rest of the show. Yeah. 
But this, I, I noticed it a lot in this disc. There's a few times in this disc. I think, yeah, kind of the second half of season four, there are a lot of times I can think of where it's, yeah, he's both a terrible, terrible person to go on a date with. Yeah. And also seems to have this remarkable magnetism. Yeah. People are just drawn to him. And maybe it's the celebrity status. Maybe. Maybe it is. And then as soon as they get to know him, they realize that he's, he's not worth the time. He's not, yeah, absolutely. Anyway, how did you rake it? Rake, how did you rake it? I how, rake, did, how did you rake this episode? I raked this episode pretty good. Um, So <laughs> it has, I gave it a four. Okay. And I think a lot of the reason that I gave it a four is because of the B plot, which we have obviously referenced with the opening of this episode, where... um. Daphne, having been denied a flu shot, has mm -hmm. contracted the flu and is not very well. Martin is guilty because he pulled Daphne away before she was able to get the flu shot because he was going down to meet Duke at McGinty's or something. Yeah, yeah. So he is, in order to make it up to her, reading to her while she's sick. And there's a, just a scene of him reading The Rose and the Rapier by Deirdre Savage. Is it actually by Deirdre Savage? It is. It's it the same, is. Well, it's the same book title, so it's presumably... That is a callback to um, the adventures of. Bad yeah, Boy I, could, and I couldn't Girl. remember. I did. I was going to ask you Season if you could Angel. remember, but yeah. Yeah, um, and this is well. This is the only time that we actually get an excerpt from the book yeah. of of Martin reading it, and it's very funny. It is. I good. think his he's clearly uncomfortable reading it, but he's doing it for Daphne's sake, and it's the kind of just his discomfort. Yeah, and like kind of squirming in his seat, turning and coughing when he has to say the word bosom and. <laughs> he gets to he gets to uh, the guy taking his shirt off, and he just he just kind of chugs the last of his beer because yeah. he's so uncomfortable. Very funny. Um, yeah, that's a great little scene, and I think a lot of the dialogue early on is good, and I like the setup. I just hate how Fraser acts at the end. Yeah, and it's a bit of a cliche. I remember ages ago there was a a tweet going around where someone had said my favorite episode of Frasier is the one where he can't get laid and he shouts at the dog with his shirt off and i because that's like such a cliche in Frasier that there's there's so yeah. many episodes that end with him shirtless having completely messed up his date yep and he's shouting either at eddie or or some niles or yeah. for every reason he's shouting and this is definitely one of those where prime, he's prime just example. it just ends with him He's screwed up the date, and he's shouting at Niles, and he's completely irate. Throws and him out into the throws him into the, the snowbanks. Snow, right? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So, with the exception of that, that like that's what lost at the point. I think that's what lost that's at fair. the final cup of coffee for me. That's fair. I gave it a slightly lower rating. Mm. I gave it a three. Um, it was th this is one of those episodes that I I I look back very highly on. I thought it was very funny. But watching it again, it doesn't quite do it for me. It is good. I, the, the first half of the episode is good. Um, them meeting the ladies in Nervosa is very funny. The flirting's very funny. Um, the scene where they're back at the apartment and Niles is sort of psyching himself up to actually go to the cabin is, yeah. is great. Mm -hmm. But the scene at the cabin falls a wee bit flat. And then obviously the ending is... Uh, just frustrating yeah. uh, so yeah it's kind of middle of the road middle of the road for me there, there was nothing that that tipped it higher than that i'm afraid yeah that's even fair. That's fair even enough. martin's book reading yeah <laughs> no it it's it's not bad no it's not bad and i think that's the same with a lot of episodes on this disc is you couldn't sit in uh, well even on this season to be mm. fair they're not bad just some of them when you compare them to like the episodes around it, you, you can't yeah, compare I, them. I, you know, I think it's so. just not quite as good. For example, if we move on to To Kill a Talking Bird, we have a phenomenal episode. Very strong episode. So if you're comparing it to this, you're going to struggle. Niles has moved in to a prestigious new apartment in Seattle, the Montana. Mm -hmm. he has signed the lease and needs to get rid of the dog that's how he comes to be at the apartment at Fraser's apartment at the start he's trying to offload the dog doesn't get a name does it 
I think it's kind of implied that her name is Lady. Lady. I think oh, he, he yeah, says maybe. Lady once or twice, but I don't know if that's explicitly the dog's name or if it's, it's just, just like, he how Lady refers yeah, right. to her. Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps. But he can't get rid of it and well, he can't get rid of it with Fraser and Martin. They refuse to take it. They finally reveal that they remi- say that it reminds them too much of Marius. Yeah can't believe that niles doesn't notice but that leads to him he gets it adopted and a family adopts the dog which is which is nice but he does feel a bit lonely so he proceeds to buy himself a little cockatoo named baby <laughs> from lady to baby yeah and uh as he as he moves into the apartment he also plans a dinner party to get to know some of his new neighbors it's, it's a very small selection i don't know how big the montana is but there's only no like idea. two families at there the must, start. Even if it's a big building, there must not be that many kind of apartments in it, condos, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Because they've got, um, well, Niles' apartment has three floors. That's true. You know, it's it's not just like a, it's basically like a house. You know? Yeah, yeah, a house in a, in a block of flats, yeah. But even then, it's, it's, it's oh, what, I can't remember their names. Peter, Peter Sutendeck. Mm-hmm. Is the Dutch banker, um, and what's the other bloke's name? I can't remember. Carol is the 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 lady, yeah. the lech. Yeah. No, the, the lush. lush. Sorry, lush. Um, I can't remember. No, I can't remember. I have Carol and uh, yeah, Peter's. Well, it's not his partner, but it's like a friend of theirs is Elaine, who also knows, who knows Maris. Maris. Yeah. Um. I can't really remember the names. That's going to annoy me. Very well. Because he shows up later as well. He shows up in another episode later on. Mm. Can't remember. But it's it's a small selection, small dinner party. And while they're planning it, Fraser bumps into one of the neighbours by the name of Stephanie. And she isn't invited, but Fraser does invite her, much to Niles' unhappiness, because there's not enough room at the table. Yeah. But it... Again, again... In true Fra- Fraser fashion, it just all goes wrong. Yep. Perhaps <laughs> it start- inevitably tragedy ensues. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it starts off so well. You know, you got you've got these upper class fancy folk coming round. Fraser and Niles know in theory how to throw a dinner party. They've got, you know, fancy wines, fancy foods, everything's laid out, it all looks lovely, they know how to entertain. Unfortunately, there's just a little bird getting in the way. <laughs> Poor baby. Yeah. Baby is afraid of fire. Baby didn't like the fireplace when mm-hmm. Fraser turned it on. So baby attaches herself to Niall's head. <laughs> um, and thus results in Niall's hiding away in the kitchen for most of the evening. And uh, t- teaching the bird some choice words about his guests as well. <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry, it's so funny. They, the, just the the language that they use, and it's like the getting to they're, they're complaining at each other. Yeah, Fraser and Niles complaining at each other, and Baby just picks up all of the these words, and then of course repeats all of them at the worst possible time. It's all this setup. It's this great setup the whole episode mm-hmm. for the final scene, which the writers just do so wonderfully. All these little, just things that are not irrelevant, but that you just don't notice in the dialogue when they're talking about it, that comes back in the end in a hilarious fashion. It's wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So, yeah, it it, it, it ends in tragedy. We've had Fraser and Niles discussing Carol and uh, Peter. P- Carol's a lush and Peter's a lech. Yeah. I don't know what a lech is. I'm not really sure, I know. I don't know. Presumably something insulting, judging well, by yeah. his reaction. <laughs> but as as Niles finally gains the confidence to come back out and apologize and and show that he is the bigger man and he can host a dinner party with a bird attached to his scalp, um, <laughs> Baby decides to repeat all these lovely things mm-hmm. that they've been saying. <laughs> 
Including, I think, something that continues from the last episode is Frasier manages to make a connection with a woman, does a very good job of flirting, Mm -hmm. actually manages to, like, get along with them very well. They're clearly interested in him. He is very clearly interested in them. And then he says something incredibly demeaning and horrible that makes its way back to the woman, who, of course, then leaves. Is it not Niles that says it? No, I think Fraser says it. Does Fra- Fraser, Fraser say says it? Stephanie's horny. Does Niles not? I thought Niles said it. I thought when they're arguing, Niles says something like, "Oh yeah, Stephanie's horny for you," or something like that. Maybe it is Fraser. I think it is Fraser. Maybe says. it is. Either way, yes, very demeaning thing to say behind her back, and of course, quite rightly, comes back and bites him. Yeah. Um, including the the line that Martin fed it earlier, <laughs> cute, cute. That's how they are, cute but stupid. And of course, that is repeated as Stephanie storms out the room, yeah. which just adds to the <laughs> cute but stupid. <laughs> oh man, oh man. I noticed that for so long in in the podcast, we have been talking about how honesty would resolve everything. In mm-hmm. all these scenarios yeah. that they find themselves in, we've been saying they just need to come clean. They just need to put their hands in the air, say, I'm sorry, it, it, there was a mess up, you know? And, this is the situation. And this is the situation, and, you know, let, let's, let's get on with it, you know? A misunderstanding. They do that here. And it works very well. Almost. If it, Okay, if it weren't <laughs> for the fact that they had been behind everyone's back saying horrible things about them to then be repeated fair fair it would have worked it would have worked perfectly if they had gone out or if niles had gone out earlier before they had said all this stuff yeah that's yeah okay maybe yeah maybe because you see a lot of the guests really sympathize quite well they do they all they have a laugh about it you know peter says that something similar happened to was it his mother his mother and a a cat mother's cat yeah Carol says something about like, oh, everyone always makes makes a tit of themselves at parties. Look, I've just spilled wine down myself. Which happens again. It like, does happen again. It, yeah. Yeah. It happens again. Ca- yeah. Carol appears in an episode in season se- seven? Five? No, so, later than that. Nah. Because it's when Niles goes back to the Montana. Is it? Yeah. Yes, it is. Which is ah, you're absolutely seven. right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Running jokes I cropping know. up already. I don't know. Is, is that necessarily a running joke or just a coincidence? It's possibly just... Could possibly be a running joke. Yeah. I mean, it's the only character development she has is Carol's a That's lush. true. That's so putting in her spilling wine down That's herself true. is quite funny. That is true. It, It's a wonderful episode. It, it's yeah, it's really unique and funny. And the introdu- introduction of Baby is great as well. Baby does show up a, f- a few times again. Mm-hmm. Um, Niall's affinity with animals never ceases to amaze me. <laughs> it's just... He just hasn't got a clue, does he? No, he doesn't. Um, but I love... W- the direction in this episode, right? We've praised the writing so much. Mm-hmm. The direction in this episode is really, really excellent. Yeah. Whenever they go through to the kitchen, there's... It's framed so nicely. You've got Fraser opening the door, focusing on him. He has a reaction of like, oh my God, what's happening here? And then the camera pans over and you've got Niall sitting with a bird and a tea towel on his head. And it's just the way that it's framed, the way the camera follows mm-hmm. them, when they peek their heads out the door. It's... Oh yeah, when they, when Elaine comes in and yeah. Niles has to peek out to see which Elaine it is. It's really, then, really yeah. well done. Um, and I think that's something that we've not praised enough. That there's a lot of good episodes that rely on the framing mm-hmm. of the scene, um, and and you know where where the actors are, not just what they're saying. So I wanted yeah. to no, that's true. Give a shout out to the wonderful directors as well. I think this episode actually won best direction. Won a best direction. Really? Movie. I think it did. It was one of them on this disc. Or at the very least was nominated. Would not be surprised. I think it was this one. Would not be surprised. Um, Yeah, that's not something I think about that much, is the direction in these. I think it's maybe because I know the writing is so good. Yeah. It makes me focus more on that. That's kind of what... The writing and the acting. Yeah. And less on things like the direction, the cinematography, especially for like a a three-camera 
sitcom uh, yeah, like it's this, not, yeah, you absolutely. don't really think about stuff like that. It's not like in a film where you've got lots of interesting yeah, camera absolutely. angles going on constantly and you think about it more. But there is a lot that is certainly setting it apart from... Yeah. Yeah. That's good worthy, point. worthy of praise. Definitely. I'd say. Well, I gave it a five. I also gave it a five. Yeah, just cut to the Definitely chase. Definitely deserves a five. It, just David Hyde Pierce, physical comedy with a bird on his head. Mm-hmm. The setup of all these jokes at the end, teaching BB, yep. the, uh, baby, baby, <laughs> the one liners, just top notch. Yeah. Absolutely top notch. It's so funny and well produced just on a whole just yeah this episode i think encapsulates everything that makes fraser great definitely the writing I the direction agree with, agree with the acting um the plot mm-hmm. you know it, it's it, it's unique for a sitcom plot which is great yeah yeah yeah, yeah. how often do you how, how many sitcoms have an episode where a bird latches on to <laughs> <laughs> one of the main cast and prevents him from hosting a dinner party you know just the ideas that these guys come up with just unbelievable yeah just just ah uh, unbelievable i mean it's not unbelievable because we watched it but yeah believable but good <laughs> believable still good. Still good. Be- believable but good roses krantz and goldenstein are dead a play on Rosencrantz and Goldenstein are dead? Yeah, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Guildenstern, sorry. Who are two minor characters from Hamlet. Hamlet. And there was a play that was made that was like a kind of adaptation of... It was like Hamlet, but like following them mm-hmm. instead of following the main action. Kind of sometime in the 20th century. My knowledge on Shakespeare is not fantastic. Yeah, neither is so... mine. I'm not much of a... Having not really studied that English much... I or I mean like literature as in, in uh, yeah, school. Yeah. Obviously, I'm a native English speaker. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know that much about Shakespeare, so that no. went over my head. I didn't really know. Still clever, yeah. It's still it clever that they can interesting. They can adapt. Now, well, he, before we get into it, here's an interesting question: What do you think came first, the plot or the episode title? Do you think they came up with the title thinking this is a great play on words and built a plot around it? Or do you think they had the outline of this plot and put an amazing play on words as the title for it? I don't know. It'd be a hell of a coincidence if they came up with the plot and then managed to shape the name around it by naming the the two characters, Krantz and Guildenstein, who we meet later on. Presumably they are called that in order to fit it to the 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 pun in the title yeah well yeah but no i don't really know what way around it would have been i don't know either way it's a good question fantastic job to to work that in to to m- meld these great jokes together yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> speaking of the plot mm-hmm. rose has been arrested she did a little oopsie and uh got caught speeding she had a choice between a fine and community service and because she didn't want the fine, she took the community service. So she is picking litter for the foreseeable future at the side of the road. And Fraser and Niles just happen to be driving past on the way or from badminton squash. Probably squash. They play? squash they play, isn't it? And much to... I keep saying much to Rose's disappointment. I think I've said that a few times as well. I need to get some... Ross is regularly disappointed. I mean, so I that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> that is fair. Um, much to Ross's disappointment, she is recognized and they speed off together. <laughs> they rescue her from the side of the road. But it turns out she had a choice between picking litter or volunteering at an old folks home. Mm-hmm. And because she doesn't like old people, which I can sympathize with, she uh, decided to pick litter. But Fraser kind of can. I don't really know why she changes her mind. Fraser convinces her that it, it's better to help old people than pick litter. I think it's partly because she, she talks about how much she hates doing the. Uh, well, I, I wrote highway beautification, which I think That's, is a technical term that they use. Is it actually? It's like, yeah, they call it okay. that because it sounds better than picking up 
garbage that's true. Of the room. that's true but she talks about how she thought it, that'd be better because she didn't want to work with old people but then it turned out to be horrible oh, yeah. she, so, she found an ear she found an ear <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> um yeah so well he kind of convinced her to get over her fear of it as well i suppose yeah that was it's his probably argument. a lot more fulfilling i suppose working with old people but <sighs> arguable yeah i suppose maybe either way who knows doesn't go well yeah her first outing at the old folks home poor mr krantz Mm -hmm. they're playing chess and uh mr krantz has a an oopsie of his own (laughs) probably shouldn't call a heart attack an oopsie but drops dead he does he collapses onto the the, is it the checkers they're playing i think checkers table on checkers i think she says on chess and uh yeah Roz is the one to raise the alarm yeah. unfortunately front and center poor mr krantz but i mean that by itself right is pretty horrible watching someone die in front of you regardless of fraser kind of kind of tries to justify it by saying oh well he was old like it it, mm. it, it was a there was a chance that it could happen yeah i was like that doesn't make it any less horrible like especially if you're it's not like he was on his deathbed just because he was in an old yeah he was home, just an old was, guy still playing checkers apparently he was still kind of chatting away and, and having a good time so he was raring to go yeah so probably still perfectly with yeah. it to, to suddenly drop dead that's a shocking thing to happen <sighs> either way Roz is understandably distraught but Fraser convinces her to go back and try again he's like oh it was a one off it won't happen again you know you need to you need to get over your fear of, of old people and wouldn't you know it happens again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Poor Mr. Goldenstein. Mr. Goldenstein. Um, we kind of see this one. She's reading to him in bed, and then says like, "Oh, your you, your eyes are closed. You're you feel, you're feeling a bit cold, Mr. Goldenstein." And then runs out the room yeah, when she suddenly realizes, suddenly realizes what's that happened. he's died. Like, oh my god! Like, I think in reality the chances of that happening are pretty. Oh yeah, they must be pretty slim. Pretty slim, but it's it's horrible mm-hmm. it's horrible and you know you would not judge Roz one inch if she decided not to go back oh yeah definitely not to be honest i don't even know if you'd be forced to continue community service after that no i was just thinking that i don't know if they would maybe consider that a good reason to just let you stop yeah over I, a speeding ticket i, know, I would I be definitely lenient if someone because that's a pretty traumatic thing to happen absolutely the idea to make someone go absolutely go back to that but alas once again, Fraser convinces her again mm. <laughs> to try and get over her fear. But he goes with her this time. And Roz goes off to, to help a lovely old lady named Moira, who doesn't die, thankfully. Doesn't die. Um, she's great. I love Moira. Yeah. She's just, uh, just full of She's so vigor. funny. She's played by Lois Smith, who was in quite a few other things around this time. She was in Fatal Attraction and she was uh-huh. in Twister. Which, oh, she plays. She plays the, Twister. the granny, the auntie in Twister. Mm. Oh, she's wonderful. Yeah, I forgot it was her. Yeah, she's so, so good those, in that. Those are both around this same time. So this is like yeah. quite a kind of guest appearance. Like she was in pretty famous films. She went on to be in. She was in Minority Report, yeah. which is a pretty big film. She was in, more recently. She was, she played the nun in Lady Bird. The oh, I've not. The, it was like 2017. Film. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I have seen. I don't remember it that well so it's i saw it and i was like oh okay i didn't didn't really remember and she played she had like a recurring role on true blood so like she continued acting for a long time i think she's still going i mean they kind of portray her as obviously she's in an old folks home and this was in what 96 97 yeah 30 years ago so it's like you know you honestly i would have assumed she had died i think she's still alive yeah i think you know kind of in her mid 90s i think she was in an episode of brooklyn 99 as well Possibly um, look more up. recently, but that I mean, yeah, go. I mean, Lady Bird was what twenty nineteen. Yeah, so that's something like twenty five that. years. Given that she's portrayed as you know elderly mm-hmm. twenty five years ago, doing yeah. well. Good go, for her. Go, Lois. Good for her. Good for her. Um, and while that's going on, while Rose is entertaining the lovely old Moira, Fraser throughout the episode, he's kind of been lamenting the fact that he isn't getting any feedback from Mm -hmm. from his psychiatry he's not despite all the people that he's helped on his show no one he's not really got anything to show for it no one comes back and tells him how they're doing he he doesn't know if he's actually helped them or not 
Um, so whilst walking the halls of of the old folks' home, he bumps into the elderly Norman, played by none other, Darth Vader himself, yeah. James Earl Jones, in actually one of the most touching guest spots. Oh yeah, of he's the such show. a lovely character in this. Old Norman, he's a lo- he's an old blind guy, mm-hmm. um, who who recognises Fraser's voice, brings him into his room, they have a nice chat, and he says that he was listening to the show one afternoon after his wife had died, and the the advice that uh, someone else was going through the same thing. Fraser gave advice that he should keep um, pictures of of the wife around the house. This is, a, this is a great little joke. Fraser says, mm-hmm. "Like, well, did my advice help you?" And he was like, "Well, that wouldn't do me much good, would it?" <laughs> <laughs> but he does go on to say that he he had a um, clay mask of that his wife is it Helen, I think the name Hel- yeah, Helen, Helen wife. made when they first started dating, um, sort of a cast clay yeah. cast of her face, and so he went and looked that out, and he keeps it beside his bed and sort of runs his hand over over her face mm-hmm. before they go to bed. I was almost in tears, honestly. That's a very, very this. sweet. It's moment really, talking about that. really touching. And J- like, I've not. I know James Earl Jones from his voice work. I know him from like Muf- Mufasa and yeah. um, Darth Vader, obviously, yeah. and various sort of narration and things like that. Mm-hmm. So he's got a very powerful voice. So th- th- this is CNN voice. This is CNN. I mean, we don't know that because we don't get don't CNN here. But I, from The Simpsons, I yeah. know that, that he did that. But. He really is a phenomenal actor as well. Yeah, he is. Uh, um, not as well. I mean, he's a phenomenal actor anyway, but physically, mm-hmm. not just his voice. He, he plays this role really well for the short time that he's on screen. It's just oh, such a lovely scene. Um, Fraser drops the mask and mm-hmm. breaks the nose. So there's sort of a bit of a farce, him trying to get the nose glued back on. And then at the end... Norman makes a comment, something about like Fraser's integrity mm-hmm. and how much he admires him. And Fraser comes clean and says, "Look, you know, I, I dropped the mask, and I'm really, really sorry. You know, I glued it back on, but it's." And, and Norman turns around and says, "Like, um, oh, don't worry about it. I dropped that thing twenty times. I am blind, you know." <laughs> and just the self-deprecating humor. It's so yeah, it is really funny. So well done. So just genuinely one of the best guest spots and, mm-hmm. and it's one that i always forget about as well it's kind of tucked away in this yeah. episode i kind of always forget about it i suppose it. he's not playing like that much of a major character no compared to some of the other big guest spots of like i'm thinking of people that we've had so far maybe like um honey snow yeah or i suppose like like nathan lane in um yeah. Fill me once, yeah. Shame on you. Fill me twice, and big big spots later on. It yeah, kind of yeah, got yeah. more and more frequent. But mm-hmm. I'm thinking of one in particular. You know, you've got big big guest stars from the. You're time. probably thinking of the same person probably, I am. Thinking yeah. of Patrick Stewart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes in and and you know the the episode revolves around them. Yeah. Whereas here he's sort of a just a side mm-hmm. character playing a guest, and he just does such a good job, such a good job, um, and that's it. Ros gets away at the end. Mm-hmm. Doesn't kill another one. Doesn't kill. Despite Doesn't kill Moira. Despite um, getting the the moniker of Angel of Death. The Angel of Death <laughs> in the old folks' home. It's the way that when um, Fraser's talking about what he's doing there, and he kind of says like, "Oh well, my friend Ros is here doing some <laughs> doing some volunteering," and he Norman goes, "Oh, Angel of Death, nice gal." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like committed to her being the Angel of Death, yeah. but also just very pleasant about it it's so sweet yeah um we do also have oh another little guest yeah and i didn't really think about this but talking about uh james earl jones being darth vader mm-hmm. another very famous sci-fi villain yeah makes an appearance or not an appearance but the guest call eric oh. roberts is the guest caller is it eric roberts eric roberts who played we the master we don't get to see him dressed i know for the occasion <laughs> oh god oh man maybe not uh i was gonna say maybe not definitely not the best portrayal of that character no but no um still eric roberts a, a himself good, a good actor is an amazing actor and i think actually i say he's not not that great of an appearance uh, not that great of a uh like version of the master in doctor who but I don't actually know if I dislike him that much. 
It's been a while since I've watched the the Doctor Who. Listen, I have been trying to convince you to do a Doctor Who podcast as well, okay? (laughs) Yeah. Maybe when it comes back more consistently, we can do a Doctor Who podcast. We'll see. Anyway, yeah, but like it's. He. I was looking at it because I kind of thought Eric Roberts, okay, yeah, I know him, famous actor. I. One of the things that jumps to mind is him being the master in the, mm-hmm. the TV movie. But also, I was just looking on IMDb. He's got like 20 projects currently on the go it, in like pre or post production. He's got like almost 700 acting credits on IMDb. I always compare him to Christopher Lee yeah. whenever I think of like the. the, the stuff that he's been in, the mm-hmm. stuff that he's appeared in. You know, Christopher Lee was in everything throughout his whole career Mm -hmm. you know all the hammer horror lord the ring star wars you know he was in everything and i think he had an award at some point for like the most um most films oh may well have done portrayed or something like that and whenever i think of that i think of eric roberts as well because he is just in everything yeah when you look at all the stuff he's been in playing not just villains you know you know minor characters guest spots and tv shows Mm -hmm. um everything absolutely everything yeah he's great mm-hmm. i think he i think he, he deserves more recognition honestly i think he is a wee bit underrated a little bit he has appeared in a lot of like sort of b movies and things yeah. like that well so is christopher lee true he was in true. the howling the howling Two: your sister's a werewolf <laughs> you know or whatever it was called god yeah <laughs> but i think he he kind of get got a bit of a reputation he was in things like the human centipede and those, oh, was he? Yeah, i think oh, one of the sequels and those kind of things yeah. and he gained a wee bit of a reputation for that mm-hmm. which is a shame because but he, yeah but he has also been in lots of he has incredibly been in lots of he was really, in really really good the, things. the dark knight is one he that jumps was, to mind of like very critically acclaimed is it Mar- maroney he plays yeah he's one of the yeah one of the, one of the two one of the two like crime gotham bosses. bosses yeah eric roberts there you go, there you go. great guest call We've not even done the rating yet. Jeez, we've no, been we rambling on about this episode. All the guest stars. What did you give it? I gave it a five. You gave it a five? I think well deserved. I think okay. it, I think it deserves a five. There's there's a lot that's really solid in this. You've got great guest stars, lots of great humour. I think the scene with the scenes with Norman that are both funny and touching, but also the scenes with Moira are both very yeah. funny and very touching. Where it's kind of exploring how she's making Roz feel better about her old age mm-hmm. but not in the way Roz was expecting she kind of says like if you want someone to tell you that life gets gets better with every passing year go talk to Mrs Edelman down the hall <laughs> who's senile you know <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that but like my life is still good yeah. I, like I've lived a very good life and I'm still with it I mean mostly <laughs> she is a bit <laughs> still a bit batty yeah. but still getting her sponge baths from Eduardo <laughs> yeah. yeah but like yeah, so great guest it's stars. A nice message at the end as well, yeah. It's, it's Everyone good. gets their own bit. Niles has his little B-plot where he talks about taking Maris to a, one of his patients' new age weddings. Yeah. And there's some good jokes there. I don't know, I think this deserves a five. I think this is a good one. I disagree. No? I did not give it a five. And it's funny that you mentioned Niles' plot, because that's one of the reasons I marked it down. One of the few, few occasions that I feel Niles' side plot detract a little bit from the episode because mm-hmm. it doesn't go anywhere no it doesn't i just don't really care um it doesn't tie into the story at all um it, it's kind of the whole setup is that he is going off to this wedding and it, it's a, an outdoor wedding of one of his patients and the whole setup is kind of for this one joke that he's got sap on his suit no that's true and daphne <laughs> makes a joke or, or sorry he gets called a sap because he took maris but he's also got tree sap on his suit i don't know it's it's funny but it's not worth it yeah. and i feel like i would much rather have had a slightly shorter first half of the episode and a longer second half with moira with norman in the old folks home yeah i can um, see that so yes i agree with everything you've said i think it's a great great episode all the guest stars are wonderful but the first five maybe ten minutes I think could be shorter and trimmed and given us a better second half, an even better second half, mm-hmm. is my argument for not giving it to the full five cups. Yeah, if that's that's fair enough. So yeah, a little maybe a little bit harsh. I feel a little bit harsh after praising it so much with all the guests, but uh, yeah. yeah, 
Yeah. Next up, we have The Unnatural. A player. We're going to start going through all the titles. Yeah. I think we should go and start going through the titles and see if we can recognize what they're all from. Yeah. You know what this one's from? It's well, pretty it's easy. The, the, natural the Natural was a, a baseball movie. Is it Robert Redfield? No. Is it Robert Redfield? Redford. Robert Redford. Red, Robert I don't Redford. know if it was. Robert Redford. But I'm thinking... Uh, or maybe it was someone called Robert Redford. Robert, was Robert, Redfield. No, Robert Redford, sorry, yeah. Uh, I can't remember. Maybe it's... Uh, no, it's not. It's Kevin Cosner. No, that's Field of Dreams. That's Field of Dreams. Maybe it is Robert Redford. Yeah. I can't remember. Never mind. Right, okay. Uh, <laughs> if we're going to do this, we we'll probably look it up beforehand <laughs> so we know the answer. Yes. <laughs> But yes, I play on the on the natural, all about baseball. The unnatural is all about softball. I don't know what the difference is. Not a clue. Softball is kind of like rounders, it's like, but baseball is just rounders, is it not? Yeah, it's the same kind of rules. Just you just hit the, the ball smaller, and then you run around the bases. Smaller scale. Yeah, it's kind of a sideways plot, I guess, to the episode. The main plot is that Frederick's flying in to come and visit Fraser. And Fraser's trying to get a tour of the Microsoft building. But he can't. He's struggling. Um, and he's, he's really stressing out quite a bit about it. Frederick, that's the one thing he wants to see. He's there for a week. They're, they've got all these great things planned. But that's the one thing he wants. And because Fraser sees him so infrequently, he wants to make it a trip worthwhile. Mm-hmm. So Roz tries to help him out. Unfortunately, she can't. She had an ex that work to microsoft or something i can't remember yeah. and luckily maybe thankfully don't know possibly not yeah. um frederick is left in the booth at kcl just for a minute while bulldog is is preparing for a show and they've just come back from the, the company softball game so bulldog is is telling him he doesn't he doesn't want to lie to frederick and tell him that his dad's a weenie yeah <laughs> so he lies and says that fraser is this great softball player and he's oh it'd be great to have him on the team but we, we can't because uh because he's busy on saturday going to you know, he's taking you to microsoft you know i oh, can't can't have him on the team unfortunately what a shame and frederick turns around and says oh i'd much rather see you play softball than yeah. go to microsoft <laughs> poor fraser honestly though if he couldn't get tickets or, or tickets, I guess. Couldn't get a tour of Microsoft. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty easy way out. Yeah. To sit and oh, definitely. sort of fluke his way through a game of softball. He, he could manage that. Mm-hmm. Or, well, normal people could manage that in it a way. It probably would be very embarrassing. I mean, I'm saying this as someone who is very bad at sports. I don't think I could sustain the, the embarrassment of standing up in front of all of my colleagues and i mean basically a similar thing has already happened with my colleagues trying to go bowling and i absolutely suck at bowling i've just got no hand eye coordination at all right fair enough but how often do you go bowling oh never exactly fraser never goes to play softball mm-hmm. right he's got two days of intensive training with martin yeah. who grew up playing softball right he knows exactly how to play and exactly how to teach and I do not think that you are so inept that you would not be able to learn at least, at least oh, yeah. enough no, no. not the to basics. embarrass yourself. No, that's that's true. Maybe that's where Fraser and I are different. Fraser just absolutely whiteies. You know, he's got <laughs> <laughs> no chance whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, he cannot hit the ball. They go to the batting cages, which we don't really have here, which is a shame because I've always wanted to go to a batting cage. Yeah, I guess Seems- just baseball's not. It's not nearly as popular here. here yeah. um, and, and Martin takes him and they spend, I don't know how long, a few hours, the rest of the day. It doesn't really like, yeah, explain. Yeah, kind of an, an evening. Um, and he just, he can't even hit the ball. But I have no doubt in my mind that, like, I'm not by any means good at baseball, but I could probably play it. And I reckon if we had a couple of days, I could probably teach you to play it as well. Mm-hmm. At least, at least enough not to embarrass yourself. Yeah. But Fraser just can't manage. He no, just he can't, can't do it. it. Um, and that results in him having to come clean to Frederick. They have a... Uh, it's not quite as... touching as as some of the other scenes that we've had in terms of, like, you know, the, the father-son sit down and have a chat in the living room. Yeah. It, it feels a little bit... Maybe it's because Frederick's young. 
and you can't really appreciate it as much. I don't know. It's he kind of says like, oh well, yeah. It, it, there comes a time in every boy's life that his father that he has to learn that his father is not perfect. And Frederick's like, yeah, I already knew you weren't perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you thought that Venus was the North Star. Yeah. I, I don't know what the North Star is. I'll be honest. Don't have a clue. Yeah. Well, Venus isn't a star at all, which is well, that's one fair. Thing that's that's fair. Yeah. Much to the disappointment of our father, I'm sure. I know. The, the our father, the astronomer. I know. God. <laughs> sorry dad um that's him learning that his sons are a disappointment rather than the other way around yeah. <laughs> although if um, there's anyone listening who would be interested in an astronomy podcast uh, yeah <laughs> tell us how much you want it we're gonna try and convince him anyway yeah. but it, I, I like the generational chat that they have frederick's learning that fraser isn't perfect and fraser is talking about when he learned that martin wasn't perfect yeah and his revelation was that martin couldn't do math in his head Mm. i think it's a little bit unfair because in well in america you have to tip or at least you're supposed to tip that's part of your payment Mm -hmm. when you get the check at a restaurant and the tip is i believe 15 percent. i think 15 percent is kind of standard 15 percent is a difficult percentage to work out Eh, i would say okay it's not the easiest right yeah it's not 50 percent. it's not 10 percent. it's kind of this weird in the middle number okay it's not like 37 percent or whatever but it's not the easiest in the world so for someone who is not academically inclined i think it's fair that you would have to you know either write it down or get a calculator or something out to work out 15 Mm percent i mean i could probably do it but i wouldn't be the quickest in the world if i had to work out 15 percent of a check yeah so I don't know. I feel like Fraser's very harsh there. But it 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 works nicely because it shows the differences in what matters to each of the children. Yeah. No, that's true. You know, Fraser has this idea of of Martin being a very intelligent man and he is, but when he couldn't work out 15% in his head, that kind of his opinion of Martin was lowered a little bit. And for Frederick, well, okay, fair enough. He learned a long before. But for Frederick, Fraser's worried that it's sports that he won't, that that will disappoint his son mm-hmm. um, because he knows that he's academic. So it's kind of this opposite. And yeah. Going down the generations. Yeah. I don't really know if there was a point to what I was trying to no, say. No, I, that, I just, that is a point. I just itself. like it. I just, I it's, it's, it's sort of a, a nice little scene. But compare it to the other late night conversations we've had we've had between like fraser and martin yeah falls a little bit flat i don't know and it kind of ends as well i would have liked to seen even like the credit sequence i would have liked to have seen a bit of the baseball game softball game Mm -hmm. i think that would have been funny watching fraser miss it. it it it's something that fraser does a lot where you're building up the whole episode around an event or a situation and then we don't actually see the situation yeah. because the humor is it's it's part of it it's not the humor isn't the situation itself it's everything going on around it yeah which isn't necessarily a bad thing but sometimes it would sometimes it is a bit frustrating not yeah not getting to see I the payoff i don't know i don't know we do get a good credit sequence though i can't remember what the credit sequence was so rose was kind of blackmail not blackmailed really but um guilt tripped oh yeah, yeah, in, yeah into phoning up her ex to try and get a tour of microsoft and the way that fraser does that is playing on Rose's love for bobby sherman when she was younger um she tried to, what is it she tried to get tickets and some or her, or her mum wouldn't drive her to go and see bobby sherman when he was doing a, a it was he was guest o- spot opening a, a opening a mall or yeah something. Um and she and he plays on her her childhood sadness of that event mm-hmm. um to convince her to let Frederick have his his day at Microsoft, um and in return, which I think is really nice, Fraser organizes Bobby Sherman to come and visit Roz at mm-hmm. KCL, <laughs> yeah. and it is Bobby Sherman. It is yeah yeah she plays shows up it as himself. We guess, but I'm not really familiar with Bobby Sherman to be honest. No, I'm, but no, I'm not. Um, it is sweet, and I think it's nice that Fraser would do that for Ross as well. Mm-hmm. Just the idea that he he does he does pay it back, you know. 
she yeah. did something very nice for him. Her ex was a pretty awful person and she really didn't want to phone him. So he knows how much it was worth and he does that for her. That's really nice. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Another thing in this episode that I like is Bulldog, who's usually very much a uh, kind of sarcastic and disinterested and like he he doesn't make the effort to make anyone else feel better because why should he yeah he's very self-centered he seems very kind to frederick yeah in a way kind of just in a like oh you're a kid and i want you know have fun i'm bringing in a gong you can hit the gong whatever but then kind of humors him when he's asking all these questions and then also tries to as much as he always makes fun of Fraser, is like lying to Frederick about Fraser being good at softball yeah. and like, oh yeah, he's great. I love your dad. He's I wish I could have him on the team, but I can't, whatever. And I think it shows like a slightly softer side to Bulldog. Maybe it's just around kids that we never really see. He's well, kind of... he does explain that it was partly oh, he, due to yeah. um the time when he was a child and he walked in on his his father having an affair. And that's not even the worst part. The worst part for a young bulldog was <laughs> that she was ugly. <laughs> Which just yeah. explains so much. It does. But we get this amazing see- the, um, amazing line from Bulldog. Which is, it's uh, his father turned around to him as he was having an affair. Presumably in the act, which is... Uh, I, I would guess but, this would be afterwards. Well, I maybe. Would be but afterwards. I would hope so, but yeah, still a bit... Uh, um, no, like, you don't look at the mantle when you're poking the fire <laughs> and when i was a child i did not understand nope. that i tried my best to understand what that meant and i oh. just didn't now i understand it yeah <laughs> and it's gross it is it is gross <laughs> but hilarious and it, it's such a bulldog line as well oh yeah it, it delivers it with such <laughs> such passion mm-hmm. <laughs> that's who he is as a person um it's again not a bad episode just not outstanding especially after the previous ones and when we know what's coming up as well it kind of sits in the middle for me yeah so i gave it a very in the middle three yeah see i'm the same it's i'm kind of caught between a three and a four yeah it's (sighs) even now i'm not sure what i'm gonna give it because i actually forgot to write notes for this and i usually decide on my ratings beforehand but i like i i didn't so i'm it's just gonna have to, i'm it's... just gonna have to wing it i'm gonna go with a three yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna put it down a bit and give it a three because it's yeah it doesn't have the snappiness it, carries, it doesn't yeah. have the snappy dialogue that we normally get it's got some nice scenes and some nice jokes but overall i think they focus too much on the plot mm-hmm. and on the oh my son's going to be disappointed in me trope and then we don't we don't get a whole lot of resolution at the end we kind of it kind of ends on frederick saying oh i i've it's fine i'm past it i already knew you were a bit of a disappointment kind of thing (laughs) and then it ends and we're like oh okay (laughs) great um so uh, yeah yeah it's got some nice moments it's not awful it just doesn't 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 have that yeah there, you know there aren't many kind of standout lines i think every other episode on this disc at least has like one one liner or like a little bit of dialogue that i can pinpoint i you, can look back and i can think like what's a good joke in this episode you don't look at the mantle when you're poking the fire yeah i don't know that's maybe like the only <laughs> bit but like a, like a really kind of clever quip yeah or like no, a really that's, witty true. Joke. that's true that's true i feel like every episode usually has that and it's it's lacking that and that's, that's maybe yeah, no, why that's i'm fair. gonna put it down for a three that's fair that's fair three it is yeah penultimate episode of this disc is rose's turn we take a bit of a step back from the humorous scenarios and the sort of outlandish scenarios we've had a bird at a dinner party people old people dying mm-hmm. fraser uh playing softball nothing more outlandish than that yeah and kind of g- ground it a little bit in this episode Roz is there's, there's an opening at kcl and Roz is applying for her own show um she wants to 
do a show about sort of singles life in Seattle, where to date, what kind of fashion trends there are at the moment, um, advice on f- for people. So presumably like a sort of call-in show yeah. as well. And she gathers all the help that she can from Fraser and the family. Daphne and Niles have a great little play where they play husband and wife. Martin does really well giving his mm-hmm. advice as well. Um, and she almost gets the job if it weren't for that pesky BB. Yeah. Lovely BB Glazer makes another appearance. Um, oh God, she's so good in this episode. <laughs> This is, I think, the maybe maybe BB's best episode. Where there's smoke, there's fired is great because she's a lot more manic. Yeah. But I think this is her at her like kind of talent agent. She is like the she's most conniving yeah. and she's just yeah, that's it, like properly turned up to eleven. So after Roz does her interview, they record uh, well, audition. They record her audition. She goes in for an interview at KCL. And BB has also brought along her um, van of yeah. prospective talent. B- BB's <laughs> Stars of Tomorrow tour, as she calls it. Oh God, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love a, sh- a spin-off with BB's <laughs> like, <laughs> upcoming talent. Yeah. I think that would be so funny. I was actually thinking about that. There were talk like people have talked for ages. God knows if it'll ever happen mm-hmm. about like a Frasier reboot or continuation yeah. or whatever, uh, whatever more Frasier. I would actually prefer a sp- like a KACL spin-off. Yeah. Because I think that would allow for characters from Fraser to return. Either characters like Bulldog and Gil and Noel mm-hmm. and Roz as like main characters, but also potentially someone like Niles or Daphne could easily make a, yeah. a reappearance. Yeah. But you could have characters like Professor Pete uh and of what are they called? I can't remember the the, oh, the, the couple that the are conser- he, He's a conservative Baptist preacher, and she's a fun loving bisexual. <laughs> yeah. Which presumably their show would just be the two of them arguing about things on oh, the radio, God. which sounds horrible. Yeah. Uh, Hilarious, but horrible. Yes. Yeah, I think that I, that would be good. Actually, I would enjoy watching a KCL spinoff. Mm-hmm. I I think at the time it would have been even better. Oh yeah. If it was twenty years ago. But now I think it would, yeah, it would, it would give a chance to sort of write something in a similar vein to Fraser, but allowing some new, some new talent, yeah, um, to to come through and take center stage. Yeah. Anyway, Roses, Roses, Babies, Roses, Roses, Babies, talent. Um, she obviously wants them to succeed and do very well, and. I I don't uh, yeah I had I had a, I had a little question for you, mm-hmm. so Fraser congratulates Roz and she's doing very well and she's the the talent to beat, so she's obviously done very well in her interview and in her audition, and he makes an offhanded comment to BB saying like oh yeah I hope she does well but obviously I'll be really sad to lose her. BB takes that as I'm going to sabotage her and make sure Fraser stays happy and doesn't lose Roz. Yeah. But I wonder if that was the intention or if her intention was to get one of her talent in. Yeah. Rather... Possibly. Because Roz isn't employed by her. Mm-hmm. Or she's not employed by Roz. Yeah. I don't know which Roz, way around Roz is not one of BB's clients. Yeah. So I wonder... She, You never know with BB. It's not impossible. She's yeah. so sneaky. Maybe she was representing the person that did wind up getting the job i can't remember possibly some, some, someone else who already it worked was, at yeah, KCL. Yeah. although if i were bb what i probably would have done is if i found out that roz was the candidate to beat would have just gone to roz and said do you want representation yeah I mean, that's yeah just get in there and well well yeah at the end of the episodes mm-hmm. uh, but before that we get a great se- roz finds out obviously um because the, the, they always do um and says for blames fraser for it quite rightly because he shouldn't have been running his mouth to bb Mm -hmm. he knows what she's like and says the only way you can make this up to me is if you fire bb and (laughs) apprehensive as he may be he does agree to it so the two of them go to bb's office and we just we get bb at her most her her bbist yeah (laughs) full as you say full-on agent mode she 
sees right from the start that Fraser is on the warpath and is probably going to fire her. So pulls out all the stops. He get she gets her receptionist to go code red. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she <laughs> runs her mouth try to say anything she can to get him to stay our receptionist brings in like trays of pills she's sitting popping pills through the whole meeting yeah gets her to phone in and say that her sister's been in a car accident <laughs> to garner sympathy and then her her sister's daughter phones in of her, her sister's daughter yeah. in quotes puts her on speaker and it's her receptionist being like auntie bb <laughs> Is mommy gonna be okay? <laughs> and it's so just, funny. It's so good. And even when she gets found out, even when they open the door and see the old receptionist mm-hmm. running the lines on the on the niece, BB still goes at it and she still does everything in her power to try and keep Fraser. She's captivating is the yeah. word I put oh, definitely. down. Just her whole scene here, her whole speech. She knows exactly what to say. And she even convinces Roz. Mm -hmm. She even turns Roz's head and convinces her to act as... Sorry, convinces her to take BB on as her agent. It's just Harriet Harris. We love her. So fantastic. We love her. She's so good. So good. Steals every scene that she's in. I don't... (sighs) We always bang on about her whenever she's on the show. Mm-hmm. So I just I feel like I don't want to almost. Yeah. But it's deserved though. It's, it is it's, absolutely she's really deserving 100% of all of deserved. our praise and all of our love. Um, um <laughs> yeah, there's a great line when she's when she kind of gives up on all of the sneaky tactics mm-hmm. and eventually just starts shouting at the two of them just saying like, "Oh, that that's your issue. I'm not I'm not pure enough and I'm not honest enough. Like, I'm an agent. What did you expect? Yeah. And she she says, I am a star maker. Yeah. And she's just kind of deranged. Yeah. And it's yeah. this, and it's actually, there's a similar line when she's uh, in Where There's Smoke, There's Fired, when Daphne's holding her cigarettes to ransom. Yeah. And she's like, I'll do, I'll do anything. I'll give you anything you want. I'll make you a star. And it's just, <laughs> she's just deranged. And she's so good. But there, are, there are people who think that that could be the way she says "I am a star maker" is a reference to um, Sunset Boulevard. It's a classic film mm-hmm. where the main character is just completely goes off the deep end, and she just says like "I am a star," and she's just got this crazed look in her eyes. I think similar to what BB's like there. Could be, yeah, could be. Actually, something else, and I don't know if it's a reference. I know it's something you're a fan of. So when BB's popping the pills. Yeah, Fraser takes a look at them because he thinks, assumes they're just going to be fake. They're going to be sugar pills or something, mm-hmm. and says that they're digitalis. Yeah, I don't know if you can think of anything else where Harriet Harris uses digitalis. I can. Yeah. Funnily enough, there was an episode in season one, I think, possibly season two of the X Files, mm-hmm. that Harriet Harris appeared in, uh, an episode called Eve. She plays, I can't remember the character's exact name, but she plays um, a series <coughs> of clones mm. called Eve, the, like Eve 1, Eve 2, Eve 3. Yeah, whatever. I can't remember what the original's called. And she, the, the, I can't remember the exact plot, but Mulder and Scully are trying to help these two little girls who turn out also to be clones, and they're going about trying to murder all of the older versions played by harriet harris and i think they murder they murder them by slipping they, they digitalis, poison, they digitalis yeah. into their drinks there you go i think that was funny that wasn't harriet prepared harriet, you thought you were <clears throat> going to catch me out and not necessarily no. i'm just i'm i am impressed that you i know you know your x-files oh so yeah i know my x-files um that's a good episode as well actually it is i do i do like it yeah actually someone else who appeared in the x-files also appears in this episode we have mentioned. Oh. Um, Who? BB's secretary, Catherine, is played by Catherine Justin. Oh, I do recognize her from somewhere. They make a joke about... She, she's appeared in a lot of things. I think she she's in... Um, she's in an episode of My Name is Earl, which I... Okay. I, I th- yeah, and that's where I think I recognize her from, actually. But yeah. she, she appears in a lot of things just kind of 
one-off parts as yeah. like a kind of slightly weird eccentric kind of older woman mm-hmm. um but she's in an episode of the x-files as well do you know what episode i can't remember i don't think it was one i had seen I'll need to she look does play up. an fbi agent in it though does she actually am i getting her confused with lois smith i don't think i am maybe i am maybe i'm thinking of lois smith who plays moira i'm trying to remember I if i am I, I don't remember i i when harriet harris is on on screen yeah i, I remember that She's episode the thinking, but unfortunately um yeah I'm secretary, i do not okay i feel like we're gonna get a little bit different ratings on this episode yeah similar to um the 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 first one that we did today that i can't remember the four for the seesaw um what did you give it now i gave this a five interesting show your work so for me it's mostly just the fact that it's bb really centered in the episode and being amazing as always Mm -hmm. but then there is also the fact that a lot of the dialogue from all of the other characters is great um the scene with Roz kind of building up the audition tape the jokes about uh bb's new clients coming in for the audition just being completely useless there's there's just a lot in the episode that i really enjoy um i think the the but the main thing is the final scene in bb's office and just bb being being herself as usual yeah so i agree but for me that's kind of a saving grace of this episode yeah i marked it down to a three (gasps) a three i did and i think two out of those three points are probably just for the scene at the end with bb mm-hmm. i i find the rest of the episode a bit boring to be honest i i like the idea of Roz moving on with her career and i feel like this episode doesn't really do it justice i would have liked to see her actually succeed yeah um so when we have Roz going in and sh- and obviously doing well but being sabotaged and that's kind of the end of it like bb does take her on as a client but mm-hmm. we, there's not a whole lot happens with that yeah there's no, a little bit true. later on but not not yeah, a lot we don't get back to that and i i feel like this could have been the start of a, a nice plot a plot line like you know multi-series plot line with Roz moving on carrying on with her career but it's not it's kind of cut short and yeah i, I don't know i feel like it doesn't do Roz justice i feel like she deserves a lot more than what happens to her in this episode and that annoys me and the episode is good well the scene at the end is good the rest of the episode just i don't know i just feel like they kind of rush through it yeah it's like Roz turns up and is like hey i want to i want to audition for this oh hey i didn't get through to the audition because of bb oh hey here's the last scene with Mm -hmm. with bb in her office i don't fair enough We've been over this before. It's sometimes hard for me to justify yeah. d- with with concrete reasoning. You know, sometimes you just get a feeling about an episode and you kind of just have to run with it. You don't need to justify it. Uh, it's, our, it's our podcast. That's true. We can just, <laughs> we can just say five. That's it. I'm giving this episode a one out of five and you can't stop me. Yeah. No, there's no ones on this disc. Absolutely not. Definitely not. Absolutely not the final episode. No. In fact, I think we just get the ratings out of the way. Because if you've given it any less than the five, I'm quitting a podcast. I'm quitting the podcast. No, this is this is a this is a five copper, one hundred percent, hundred percent, possibly the best episode of the entire show. Definitely, uh, it's one of the ones that comes to mind if I think of like best episodes yeah. in the show. I think if you're recommending the show to anyone, someone who's never seen the show, mm-hmm. I would probably recommend Ham Radio. Yeah, yeah, very possibly. There's a few others that I'd I'd consider. Mm-hmm. But I think Ham Radio is not even episodes of Frasier, episodes of sitcom television. Yeah. One of the best in history. Ha- hands down, without question. Um, it is absolutely outstanding. We have a little bit of setup at the start. It's it it's funny how they structure the episode actually, because the majority of it is set during the play itself 
but the start is we get a brief scene at Cafe Nervosa, a brief scene at KACL, and then a brief scene at Fraser's apartment, all preparing f- for a radio play. They used to do them back in like the 50s and 60s. You, As Martin says, you would gather around the radio and listen to a, a tale of murder and mm. uh, horror, or whatever. And Fraser's recre- recreating one for, I think, KCL's 50th It's the 50th anniversary. 50th anniversary, yeah. yeah. Uh, a story called Nightmare in, and yeah, again in true Fraser fashion, <laughs> he is taking control of the production. Yeah. It is it is an existing script. Yeah, a bit dated as we learn from Bulldog's part, <laughs> but um, he has kind of taken over. He's rewritten it. Um, he's taking over the directing duties, and Niles calls him out on this first thing literally one of the first lines in the episode niles calls out exactly what's going to happen fraser's going to over direct he's going to take over a part in the play he's going to take over the the main cast Mm -hmm. and he's going to have rewritten the script so it's unrecognizable yeah and wouldn't you know that's exactly Exactly what happens happens. yeah he has an orson welles complex that yeah as niles puts it yeah which doesn't mean uh, the French. <laughs> I was gonna say that doesn't that doesn't mean that he gets drunk and does wine no. commercials. But <laughs> oh, oh man, I, I love Orson Welles. That is just he's the, the funniest. Such I'm a bastard. He's going, <laughs> yeah. If, if anyone is listening and doesn't know what we're talking about, look up Orson Welles, like the Paul Masson uh, wine adverts. We'll look up, we'll, we'll... They're so funny. Even like the actual takes. I mean, like the outtakes are hilarious yeah. because he's so drunk. He's rip roaring drunk. Absolutely trashed. <laughs> but the um, even like the final advert is still funny it is. because he's so clearly drunk. Yeah. But yeah, go and watch them. They're great. Yeah. Anyway, moving on with Fraser. <laughs> so from Orson Welles to Fraser, you don't need to make much of a jump for no, that comparison. Not at all. <laughs> um, little scene at KCL. Um, to establish that we've got Bulldog coming in, his new girlfriend playing a single line part in the play, um, and Gil is joining as one of the... Oh, what's his name? He wants to join as Bull Kagan, the brutish gamekeeper. Yeah. Um, but he actually... Oh, it's Ni- Nigel Fairservice, <laughs> drummed out of the RAF under mysterious circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> and as Roz puts it, with him playing it, the circumstances may seem a little less surprising. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A little bit of a hmm, yeah. comment on his sexuality, but anyway, we we went over that at length last week, so yeah, we won't do that again. Was it last week? No, the week before. Two weeks ago. Impossible dream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So we've got the cast. We've also got Mel. Somebody. Mel, Mel White. Mel White. He's called, which is a reference to Mel Blanc. Oh, Mel, Mel Blanc, Blanc, of course. They, they, the uh, Man of a Thousand Voices, very famous. Uh, Bugs voice Bunny, is it not? Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny, yeah. Looney Tunes, all different voices. Countless others, yeah. People talk about him being the best voice actor of all time because of the the duck season, rabbit season bit oh, in the Looney yeah. Tunes when it's uh, Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. And they start saying things to each other and then also saying things imitating each other's voices. And Mel Blanc was the only person who could possibly do that where he's voicing two characters talking to each other and then also yeah. imitating each other's voices and just yeah and quite right that's timeless it is you know that scene is yeah so we have uh, a voice actor a little, little homage to, to mel named, named after him mel white um and it doesn't take long for fraser to get right under his skin yeah um so we've got mel is playing is it six parts six or seven mm-hmm. parts um, of like the minor characters, we've got Peppo the dwarf, yeah. the uh, oh, what are they called? The the Spencer sisters, the McAllisters, the McAllisters, sisters. um, the Germ- Hans the the German butler, butler, and um, o- O'Toole the gamekeeper. Oh yeah, the Irish gamekeeper. Yes, oh, it's, it's wild. Absolutely. Oh no, is he the gardener? Gardener, maybe. Yeah, yeah, Bull, yeah. Bull, 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 Bull Cragen's, Cragen's the, the gamekeeper. Yeah. And so they go. They they have this script read at Fraser's apartment. The whole KCL cast and Mel, Daphne reading the lines. A little bit out of character for Daphne. She seems very grumpy here. I don't yeah. know if it's because she was roped in to do it. Mm-hmm. There's not really kind of justification. 
She just, it, it, I don't know, it, it always feels a little bit out of character for me. Yeah, no, I, I agree. She's a lot more kind of sarcastic and a lot more grumpy. And yeah. I, I don't necessarily want to say rude because I think she is pretty justified. It's in, justified given Fraser's yeah. attitude. But yeah, I, I just, yeah, I don't know, just uncharacteristic. Mm-hmm. It's still funny. It's oh, still yeah, hilarious. Um, and yeah, so they, they run through the script. There's a few rewrites uh mr wang the chinese silk merchant um yes very inappropriately voiced by bulldog mm-hmm. is is renamed to mr wing because he'll crack up <laughs> some of the lines are rewritten because they're horribly horribly offensive yeah and Roz rightfully calls him out on it to be fair it was a play from the 60s i guess you mm-hmm. you, I, you can kind of justify it by saying it was a different time i suppose yeah and they choose to rewrite it so fine um and mel eventually is fed up with fraser uh what is it the McAllisters aren't spinsterish enough hans was more austrian than german and uh the irish gardener was more protestant than catholic yeah. and of course peppo the dwarf sounded <laughs> oh, too, too tall, too tall yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god imagine having fraser as your director no jeez not. he's it's all all those little things as well are so irrelevant. How mm-hmm. could you possibly possibly act on those comments? It's, I guess that's the point. But still, it's just so outlandish. Yeah. It's hilarious. Um, so yeah, Mel runs out and uh, Niles is drafted in to take on the the six or seven extra roles over from Mel at the actual production. And then for the remainder of the episode, and it's good, you know, 10 minutes, it's the good second half of the episode, if not more, is spent just at the radio play, which is, I think, really well done. Yeah. In terms of, like, the episode structure, I think it they, it would have done them a huge disservice if they'd cut it any shorter. Um, it, The fact that we get to see the play in full, I think, is... is yeah, I think so. ...a wise choice. Um, you know, we spoke about not actually seeing the situation and the comedy surround su- being surrounding the situation itself. Whereas here is one of the few instances where we get the situation itself that is the center of the joke. Mm-hmm. And oh boy, <laughs> is it an absolute cracker! It everything that can go wrong goes wrong. You know, everything. Yeah. We've got Roz is at the dentist, numbed up on Novocaine. Uh, Bulldog gets stage fright. Niles didn't get the script the night before, so he hasn't prepared. Yeah. Bulldog's partner is is dyslexic, <laughs> dyslexic. and can't read the line. Um, Gil's uh, favorite lines from the script get cut, which sends him into a he he Bit starts act, he starts acting out and yeah refuses to do it anymore and Noel well Noel's got Noel's one of my favorites in this scene he's, he's, he does the all the all the sounds mm-hmm. he's got this full soundboard of all the uh like the doors opening and the um the gunshots popping balloons uh his coffee thermos what does that do it, it keeps my coffee warm <laughs> um and the the phone as well. And the phone rings. The phone goes off in the middle of the recording. <laughs> oh, God, it's just utter madness. And I don't know about you, right? But I almost don't want to talk about what happens. Yeah. I feel this is one of those scenes, one of those few few scenes that you just need to watch yourself. You can't do it justice. And just appreciate. Yeah. Because it's so so amazing Mm -hmm. i cannot quite put into words just how perfect this scene is it's i think it's similar to um in an affair to forget there's the scene when they're speaking different languages and they're translating back and forth in season two yes it's similar to it's like us talking about it it's just going to demean it yeah you've got to go and watch it Presumably, most people who are going to be listening to this are already fans of Frasier. Yeah. Have heard, like, seen it, heard it before. Mm-hmm. But just, 
do yourself a favor go and watch it again because it's incredible. we're about to round up here if you've not seen this episode Turn us off in, in a minute. Not right now. Mm-hmm. Give us Let's round up, guys. <laughs> no, not yet. Turn us back on. <laughs> um, and uh, go and and find it on, on Catch Up, on wherever, on your DVD collection, and sit and just appreciate this episode because it is one of the best, if not the best, if not the best. Mm-hmm. There's no question. Absolutely. No question. I think I can't remember what episode it was previously. Maybe episode in maybe author author or something that I said if you'd you know you can give any episode you want a one but if you give this episode any less than a five yeah I'll have lost all respect for you mm-hmm. and I think same goes for this episode like, oh, yeah, if no, you don't no give it a five could, it's it's no way I couldn't give this yeah, a five absolutely <laughs> phenomenal and uh, quite honestly I want to wrap up there yep. because I just you can't you can't put into words how good <laughs> it is. You know, it's ah, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm happy wrapping up. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic! Absolutely fantastic. So, other right, I'll say other than the whole of Ham Radio. Yeah. Do you have any highlights? Because otherwise, it's going to be the radio play. I think the one thing that I'm gonna I'm gonna give the highlight to. I don't know if it's necessarily what I would think of as the highlight of the disc, but definitely something that I love that I haven't mentioned mm-hmm. is in To Kill a Talking Bird, they uh, when Niles is first realising the situation when the bird has landed on his head and Fraser hands him the phone and says, you know, here, take the phone. And he kind of pulls the antenna out and tries to get the bird to land on the antenna. Yeah. He says, like, no, what are you doing? Just call someone for help. And he says, who am I going to call for help? A Fez rental? <laughs> And I, I just love that line. The way it's delivered, the way he, yeah. he's just so exasperated. He kind of th- flings the, the phone down yeah. on his on his fainting couch, in frustration. And it's a great little bit, great little line. David Hyde Pierce, that whole episode. Oh yeah, I think just gets gets the chance to really stretch the physical comedy mm-hmm. comedy to its limits. Yeah, with the oh. bird and him falling about and faking, you know, like the uh, the bird digging its yeah. claws in and yeah. everything. The scene when they they talk about the dog looking like Maris. Yes. And they kind of say like, oh, you remember the little pillbox hat that Maris <laughs> wore to this wedding? And then they put a little ramekin yeah. on the dog's head to look like a hat. And he sort of faints. He kind, he of, kind of falls backwards onto the yeah. couch. And I think that that's another contender yeah. there. That's a great little, great little bit. David Hyde Pierce. I, I, I was watching the, the interview that you mentioned actually a few weeks back. Um him and bb newworth talking oh, yeah. about julia mm-hmm. um it's, it's amazing how similar he is to niles in real life oh yeah <laughs> just in his delivery of lines and even just when he's talking casually mm-hmm. he's obviously not quite as um exaggerated as yeah. niles but just in the way he carries himself and the way he chats casually it's, I, it's there's something really sort of comforting yeah. and lovely listening mm-hmm. to him talk he seems like such a genuine person yeah he seems so and and bb newworth as well oh absolutely just they, seem they, they look they work so well together and they look like they really they really enjoyed their time on fraser and i always feel bad see when you watch interviews of shows that have been off the air for 20 years and people are constantly bringing them up to actors in interviews like oh i remember when you were on Fraser, when you were on Friends or Seinfeld or whatever from back in the day, I always think, oh, do these actors not get tired of it? You know, yeah, you know, getting t- you, 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 they're here promoting this new series, this new film or whatever, and you're just constantly bringing it back to something that they did twenty, thirty years ago. I, I can imagine that gets difficult, but you you see them talk about Fraser, and they both have such admiration. Yeah in the way they talk about it and how amazing it I, I, well, how amazing it was for them working on the show and working with the, the people that they did and it's just so nice to see it is it's just so yeah. nice to see i need to watch julia actually i need to it is very catch good up on it. i've heard the, nothing but good things the most recent episode quite heavily centers around um david hyde pierce and bb newworth right. together their characters good. like there's 
I think I, I have mentioned before, so they're playing Julia Child's husband and best friend, respectively. Yeah. And there's quite a lot of conflict between the two of them because they're both very different people, but and they're kind of butting heads a lot. And not quite the same way, but a similar way to how Niles and Lilith did. Yeah. And they just, they work so well together. That's, yeah. And yeah, it's good to see. Yeah, I need to watch it. Right, my highlight, and then we'll 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 run it off. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to give it to James Earl Jones. Yeah, because I, I don't know. Watching it before, I don't think I really appreciated how good his acting was in this scene, and just how, just how heartwarming it is watching him talk about his wife and mm-hmm. about being blind and things like that. But watching it this time round, oh man, I, w- I was I was I was tearing up watching it. It was so lovely, and someone like James Earl Jones that is very typecast as. I feel bad saying that because I did typecast him earlier, but he is he is known as Darth Vader. He is known as Mufasa. <laughs> yeah, the very powerful voice. But he's he's so much more than that, and getting a, he, the fact that he can make such an impact on a little guest spot like that, it just goes to show what an amazing actor he is yeah so there you go my highlight james mr jones. james earl jones sir james earl jones oh i don't know he bloody well better be by now i don't know do they often knight americans i don't know they should they shouldn't be knighting anybody well get that's rid- that's that's a different monarchy. conversation on, right? <laughs> he should. or maybe they should only knight people who have actually done interesting things like being in Frasier. <laughs> they should all get a knighthood. Yeah. I quite agree. Quite agree. There we go. Okay. Disc three of season four. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're almost done I feel like these episodes four. have gone by very quickly. They Maybe have. because they're so good. Yeah. Just have no problem uh-huh. chatting about them and, and going through it. We've got one more disc. A, a, another great set of episodes coming up. Yeah. You know, the, I, we're going to get another couple of fives before this season's out. Easy um and then yeah we take a short break we've got something very fun planned for uh next bonus episode yeah just to tease that a little bit if you've been paying attention to this episode you might be able to figure out what it is but Mm. that's all i'll say all i'll say um and then yeah moving moving on the show season five big stuff coming up big stuff yeah keep saying it every week but getting closer and i'm looking forward to it looking forward to it well thank you for being here with us thank you Ewan for being here with me thank you for having me oh you're you're more than welcome and to all of you listening I hope you have a great day good mental health and thank you for listening This has been a Happy Brothers podcast. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Happy Bros Pod. All opinions are our own. And as always, special thanks to Leo O'Donnell for the show's artwork.